All right, guys, so this is the Wuxin WXR 3D printer that actually is quite unique in its own right. This is everything that's included, as you see, and this is how it came out of the box. This brand here is quite unique as they are a US-based company, as a lot of the parts and assembly happens here in the US. So we do have checklists of quality assurance, and everything is labeled here, was been checked and signed by. And also another checklist of everything that's included. The whole printer literally pulls out of the box just like this pre-built and then we get a couple boxes and we can see there a US flag and the manual also and a full kilogram of filament and here we have the build plate that's separately packed in some soft foam all right so let's go ahead and see what's inside this little box and we can see we get a few things here on the inside looks like we have parts of a spool holder the power cord and actually looks Quite a bit longer than usual, maybe about six feet or so. And it does have a pretty good thickness to it. More spool holder parts. We're gonna need to put this together or just kind of clips together, it looks like. And it is all 3D printed very nicely, actually. So we get a little blue cable to connect from the printer to the computer. Some snippers. And these are quite useful to cut the filament on an angle. We also get a test print. It looks like printed on this printer. And for the last part is our scan disk full size SD card. That's 16 gigs. So yeah, very nice. And we also get a wrench, just one size Allen wrench, but it looks like all of the bolts that we would need to turn are this size. So, so yeah, as you guys can see, there's not too much stuff going on here. Everything is pre-built and should be ready to go as we have these pretty long checklists here that tell us that. So let's go ahead and get this foam out. Take a closer look at our build plate, which looks quite cool and unique. It is a build tech, got the model WXR, and you can print on both sides. And it's got like this nice textured material, which I believe is the original build tech. So pretty cool. There is a cutout here on the top, or at least that's where it lines up look like. Let's see. All right, yeah, so they're just lineups. And then it magnetizes. So we're gonna look a little bit more in detail of all the parts in a second. Let's check out this manual here. It's a quick start guide, very nice. Thick pages, some safety instructions, unpacking the printer, a few orange parts to remove, and that's these we see. They're all around, and we'll get to that in a second. The spool holder, how it constructs or snaps together and then sits on the top here. All of the different parts of the printer, how to load filament, their calibration cube, which will be the first print, and that's where the bearing should fall right in and that's the tolerances and here we got some slicer information and then on the very back we got support and warranty so yeah very cleanly done here and quite simple guys so let's go ahead and remove all of these orange pieces and so these are just holding the different parts for moving during shipping so we're going to grab the wrench that was included and the first one here is holding the y-axis bill plate so we just need to release and actually there's two of them one on the other side all right this should just pop right out so now our build plate is free to move around. So we have a couple more. One here on the x-axis, and there's a bolt here that goes to the side. And then another bolt on the back, right here. That's actually using a little T-nut, so yeah. And it has the words remove on the top of it. Now we do have actually a couple more here on the z-axis, one on each side. So yeah, quite a few holders here keeping things from moving around so this one also has a little t-nut and the last one on this other side all right so looking at the back here we're gonna build our spool holder which is quite simple you just grab one part of it and here on the bracket we can kind of see it says back side or back right you set it towards the front and then you kind of put it down and it clips in so but before we put it in let's go ahead and build it so we're just gonna insert these bearings into the holder like that and then the other side will just go on top here just like that so you kind of have to hold it all together and then we'll kind of line it up in the center and go down and it clips right on simple as that and this is what it looks like towards the front and if we need a center we can kind of push it around side to side so the spool just literally sits on the top here and then rolls on these bearings so yeah guys, as you can see, there's not much to assembling, taking out of the box and quite minimal on the end user as far as putting anything together. So starting here on the top, we can see our spool holder and how it comes together. It is fully 3D printed, pretty nice piece. And there are a lot of 3D printing parts on this printer, which I personally like. So we can see our frame here. It's a little different looking than usual. And it is an aluminum extrusion with lots of detail everywhere. We've got end caps and the fit finish is very nice anywhere 
where you look. So going down here to the X axis, we can see this is all 3D printed here. These are metal and we got the clear type V rollers. So this is where you would adjust your tension on the belt for the X axis. We are riding on these linear rails. So the hot end extruder combo here, which is a direct drive is quite interesting of how it's put together and it looks very unique. So on the top here, we can see the motor. There's a switch here. This appears to be kind of maybe like a filament detector, but there's an arrow pointing here to a hole and that's where our filament goes in. And this is the extruder mechanism here and it is a 3d printed part kind of see the gear in there we got an adjuster on the other side very unique i am a little worried that the input port here is just a hole it doesn't have brass bushing or anything but because it feeds straight from the top it shouldn't be an issue for the most part and we got this leveling probe here and we can see that sack of wires coming out and going to the main board so there we can see our heat brake with also the heat block it does say made in USA on them. And this is a V6 style hot end. On the front here, we got dual coolers. Also kind of hard to see, but they are name branded, looks like. With a 3D printed fan shroud that cools the nozzle underneath. And going to this side, we can see the heat brake fan. And it appears to be one of those high-end ones. So going this way, we got the X-axis motor. And all the motors are company branded. Now what's interesting is this piece here is actually 3D printed where the motor mounts. These are metal, but we do have 3D printed parts that connect to them. So flipping the printer around to the back side, we can see these ends where the lead screws go in are also 3D printed. And it doesn't really do anything up there as there's no bearing or anything. You guys can see here where the spool holder clips on. Now what's interesting is because this is a dual Z axis, they decided not to go with the tethered belt. Normally I do love to see them tethered, as if you spin one, the other one spins. But I've also seen printers that are not tethered that do an excellent job. So, so going down on the leads, we can see where the bushings are for the connections. And quite interesting as this piece is also 3D printed and can't really see what's inside. But same thing on this side. We've got a lot of wires that go through the back here. They are a little close to the lead screw, but they're tucked away. So going down, we can see the two motors. Again, there's 3D printed brackets that hold the motor very nicely executed. Same thing on both sides. And this is the kind of coupler we got, which is quite interesting. It's got kind of like a little insert inside. So going down here, we can see it's pretty clean. We do have two linear rails that are very widely spread. I love that. We got a normal style belt. This is the motor here. Again, more 3D printed brackets. So this printer has a lot of 3D printed parts. And looking at the bed a little closer, we can see we got a really thick frame and it is hard connected to the bed, which is a composite. It's not an aluminum bed, but it is heated. We can see the wire here coming in, which is super strain relief. And it kind of goes around and tucks underneath. There we have the manufacturing label designed and assembled in the USA large squishy feet on four corners and going this way we can see we have the power port and this is where our AC cord will plug in very nice end caps and our power switch is over here and going back to the front you can see what the base looks like so it's just a cover and it's actually a plastic cover we got the two rails the belt here and this is the idler pulley in the front and you can adjust this let's say your belt is not running true there are two bolts right there on the front that if you turn one it'll pull one side in which will be able to level out perfectly to the pulley so everything is very cleverly designed and well executed but we do have a lot of 3d printed parts which is very interesting and a lot of them in functional areas and going to the very front we can see we have a very large display which has a rotary knob looks like something there maybe a light and a button here probably the reset we have a USB port on the right side and a full size SD card slot on the left and this is a 3d printed housing and looks pretty nice kind of looks like a Prusa let's go ahead and peel this off and we got a nice little brand logo there so and to the left here nothing too much just this wire coming out and going to the top of the printer and you guys can maybe see how well everything is put together. So it is quite empty space. We got the main board here and then our power supply, which is a mean well, 350 watt, 24 volt. Lots of 3D printed parts all over the printer, even underneath here. Let's go ahead and take this cover off and see the main board. So we can see the main board with stepper drivers. They are heat synced and also they are removable, which is really cool. That's the board model there. And yeah, it looks like a really nice assembled board. Everything looks very tidy and clean and a great execution of wiring. Let's see if we can't pull one of these drivers out. And maybe you guys can see, probably hard to make out, but Big Tree TMC 2209 version 1.2. So very nice driver. 
Go ahead and plug it back in. And yeah, very nice under here, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and put this lid back on and then we'll flip it around. But let's go ahead and look at the screen board here. It's also Big Tree Tech TFT43 version 3.0 and it's all kind of open here and this is a 3D printed bracket. But again, very clean execution of everything. <laughs> Looks great. And we also do have pretty large rubber feet underneath the four corners. So the build plate is a build tack material and the build volume is 250 wide and then 210 deep and 250 tall. Yeah, great build volume for medium format. And the build plate does magnetically stick to the composite heated bed. And we got pretty nice designs here. And it says not to print on this part. And the build plate is reasonably thin. It doesn't flex as much as those super thin ones but it does still flex and we do have two different designs that you can print on both sides so whatever you want to pick and you guys can see the little cutout there goes around those bolts and that's how you line it up and it goes down perfectly every time and on the corners on the bed underneath there's a cutout where you can grab it easily and just pick it up so and overall looks quite unique and i love the gunmetal finish and if you're a 3d printer enthusiast you'll probably appreciate this printer a lot more than most